this episode, we're going to go beyond Hong Kong once again, and we're going to have a look at the Trinity Cine Asia release of Spirit Walker. <laughs> So, welcome to HKB here at Hong Kong Blu-rays. We sometimes go a little bit further than Hong Kong because we're big fans of all Asian cinema and cinema in general. And a big shout out to Mike who works with Trinity Cine Asia. He um, set us up with a preview copy of Spirit Walker, South Korean thriller from, I think, 2020. Yeah, I, um, I was very pleased to uh, be able to watch this early. This film will be available to rent or buy on streaming platforms at the end of March. So keep an eye open for this one, folks. What do you think, Jazz? Think of this one. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very different sort of story, although it did put me in mind of like Quantum Leap. <laughs> yes. Give give the folks a little rundown then of the synopsis. She'll read out the synopsis. Yeah. yeah. Waking up with a gunshot wound. A mysterious man has no memory of who he is or where he came from, but soon finds himself transported into someone else's body every 12 hours. Confused and hunted down at every turn, it's a race against the clock as he pieces together clues about his identity and any connection between the seemingly random body swaps he is experiencing. So there you go, pretty mysterious. This was a different um, approach to one of these South Korean action films, which, you know, we're pretty big fans of. We, we love stuff like Yellow Sea, The Chaser, Bit of Sweet Life, all those mm. films, you know. Everybody knows out there, South Korea do some absolutely cracking action films. And, but, you know, it always, it always seems like the, the budget is so good. The, technology with their filming techniques the way they put everything together it always mm. you know well not always but on a lot of the stuff that we get to see it just reeks of professionalism yes yeah i think that's fair to say yeah would you say that applied to this film i think so yeah 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 so i mean i i did like this i, I thought the approach was very different it does keep you guessing right from the word go yeah yeah, you don't find out really what's happening until the last you know, section of the film, which is good. I mm -hmm. like it when, because sometimes you know what's happening and you're watching, waiting for the main character to find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. But in this one, you don't know any more than the main character does. Mm -hmm. So I like that, that you're trying to piece it together yourself as he is. You're going with him on his journey to find out what on earth is going on. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, th there were some some really good actors in this, and if, if I'm gonna be honest, I'm not as familiar with um, Korean actors yeah, as uh, yeah. some people. You know, if, if I listen to podcasts on fires, what's Korean cinema quite often, and you know, Phil and the guys over there can they really know all, all, all this stuff and. Um, Paul from Hangoid, Paul Quinn from Hangul Celluloid, who also does the show with Ken. They they would probably you know know all about these guys, but um, unfortunately we don't. But I was I was really impressed with um, Young Ki Sung, the main guy, the one who's got the identity problem. Mm. I thought he was very good actually. You know I think he had a really difficult job to act that sort of character that doesn't know who they are. And you know, the, all the different emotions and all the complexities of these feelings as, he, as he's going along and trying to piece together what's actually happening to mm. him. That's a tough, that's a big ask of any actor. Yeah? Definitely. Was there um, any other actors that stood out of this? I know you had your eye on a couple that you quite liked. It's all good. I liked the homeless character, the actor that played him. Um, mm. Not sure. We've got it written oh. down here. Was it Park Ji Hwan? Yeah, I really liked yeah. him. 
Yeah, the element he brought to it as well. Yeah, we referred to as croquet in the film and the main guy is hot dog. You have to see the film to understand why, but it, it does, you know, it does become quite a essential plot point actually, that those, those couple of names. But it does help motor the plot along. And um, yeah, it's very clever. I'm a bit, I'm a bit slower than Chaz, so I was piecing together this jigsaw a lot slower than what you were, I think. But I did, I did enjoy it quite a lot. I thought the action sequences were really good. I think, yes, um, yeah, you know, especially right at the end, like you say, some some really good gunplay in this. Mm. Some nicely crafted martial arts sequences with some really quick hand-to-hand -hand, um, exchanges. Yes. You know, it's all that, yeah. Yeah. And some knife fights. You know, it's kind of a um, a little edge of like. Uh, like the man from nowhere with like a bit of knife bites and stuff like that in there. I I, I I really enjoyed what they put into this. I did struggle with the plot a little bit, but I think that's because this is a first time watch. And you know, if you're fans of these types of films, you're gonna watch this more than once. And I think on a second viewing, this is probably gonna raise up a little bit more. What do you think? I think so. I think as well, bear in mind that it's not a straightforward plot in that it's not a sort of standard plot that you can grasp. Mm. Yeah, like the straight away. You have to go with the ride mm. and let it take you with it. And then I think it does definitely become clear at the end. And mm -hmm. then you can think back and like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this bit, that bit, that bit. Mm. But I guess like any film, a second viewing sometimes just helps cement a few bits maybe you didn't get on the first viewing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you you got to appreciate the, the work they put into these films, appreciate the effort and the, the thinking outside of the box to present the audience with something different. Yeah, I think they really did that with this film. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that hopefully, you know, this, this film will do well on a streaming platform. Maybe a little bit later on, you might get Blu-ray with some extras. I'd like to see some extras on a Blu-ray, perhaps a commentary or a little behind the scenes, you know. Yeah, um, that'd be I'll be very interested to see a little bit more from the makers of this film. I um, believe there's one currently streaming on BBC iPlayer, which is The Cop, The Thief, and The Devil, or something like that. But um, mm. we're going to take a little look at that soon because this film's intrigued us. It's really yeah. to our curiosity. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to score this now, unless um, you want to add anything else in there. I think we've covered everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, for me, this one's a solid 7 out of 10. For me, I'm scoring this one 8 out of 10. Yeah, more up your wheelhouse than mine, because you, you like these, like, you know, in-depth plots, mysteries. mysteries. Yeah, really piques your um, enthusiasm. So, yeah, very good film. High recommend from us here at HKB. We recommend to all you film fans out there that when this is available for for streaming, maybe give the rent, maybe buy it. Um, depends on whether you like, you know, collecting physical media or not. But definitely give it a look. There's a lot worth seeing in this one. Right, so that's it for this episode then, folks. Um, if you made it this far, then please hit the like button to let us know that you enjoyed. And we will see you on the next one. And remember folks, be true and stream the film. <laughs>